Hello, and welcome to this GageMaker webinar. My name is Matthew, and I'll be your Global Spec moderator. And I want to review a few housekeeping items with you before we begin. Please take a moment to familiarize yourself with the operation of the user interface for today's webinar. The large window with the heading presentation in the upper left is the primary window for today's session. Just to the right of the main presentation window is the speaker bio window with background information on today's presenter. Just below that is the Q&A window. At any time during the presentation, you can enter a question into the box in the lower section of the window and click Submit. Your question will be placed in the queue to address when we get to the Q&A session. At the bottom of your screen, you will see additional buttons to enhance your webinar experience. To see what a particular button does, just place your mouse pointer over it and a tooltip will appear with a description of the button's function. Now let me introduce today's presenter. With us today is John Wolf, the Senior Technical Analyst for GageMaker. To read more about John, please look at the speaker bio window right next to the main presentation window. And with that, let's pass things along over to the GageMaker team to kick things off. Hello everyone, my name is Ashley Carrizales with GageMaker in Houston, Texas, and welcome to our webinar for in-process large diameter measurement. I will be your host for today, and John Wolf, our senior technical analyst, will be our speaker discussing a better way to measure large diameter parts. Mr. Wolf will also be answering the live Q&A at the end of this presentation. If you're joining us live, we're excited to have you. If not, then we appreciate you taking time out of your day to view our presentation. Let's get started. GageMaker is a Houston-based manufacturer of precision inspection equipment and measuring devices for the quality control industry. GageMaker is recognized as a leader in the fields of gauge calibration, thread measurement, proprietary thread inspection, and large diameter measurement. With innovative products and software like the MRP gauge, MicTrack, Certify, TDWin, and Mic360, we are dedicated to solving the problems of our customers and offering solutions that benefit multiple industries. Our employees include a highly trained staff of engineers, sales, and manufacturing specialists that are committed to maintaining the highest level of quality product design and production. Our state-of-the-art facilities combine to make us a premier manufacturer. A little about our presenter. John Wolf is an industry authority in the fields of metrology, engineering, and manufacturing. He's an active contributor to various technical committees that develop industry standards and practices. With over 40 years of experience, his work in tooling design and large diameter measurement led to the issue of five patents. John's contributions to metrology is recognized worldwide as the co-inventor of GageMaker's MRP thread inspection gauge, which is now the leading practice for how premium threads are measured. John, walk us through some key takeaways for today's webinar. By the end of this webinar, my goal for you is to understand the best method for accurately measuring large diameters, to realize the cost and limitations of traditional inspection methods, to have all the tools necessary to achieve repeatable and reproducible diameter measurements, and to enhance the quality and safety of part measurement in the shop. Selecting the right precision measuring equipment for big parts can be very challenging. Common methods include large OD and ID micrometers, pie tapes, probes, and other sophisticated instruments like articulating measuring arms and complex laser systems. When presented with an opportunity to machine and inspect a large diameter part, immediate concerns come to mind. Accuracy, cost, and safety are always at the forefront. For medium-sized parts, the go-to instrument may seem obvious, OD mics. That notion is apparent even in the namesake of the gauge. However, when the part gets larger and larger, all the benefits you expect from using a standard OD mic are quickly overcome by its limitations. John, let's explore these limiting factors. Accuracy begins to rapidly decline as deflection and dimensional instability of the gauge come into play. Eventually, the part may be so large that two operators are needed to take a single measurement, which can also greatly affect measurement results. Why should the accuracy be so dependent on the individual operator or inspector's skill level? Pie tapes are simple in use, but can have questionable accuracy. Bar gauges bring accuracy back into the equation, but now cost becomes a considerable factor, as each gauge is size-specific and requires a dedicated setting master. You may need an assortment of gauges and standards. Probes and measuring arms eliminate the need for setting masters, but the high upfront cost comes right back into play. Laser systems provide needed accuracy, 
but the time for setup, training, and use is considerable, adding to the overall cost of measurement. The importance of safety during measurement cannot be understated. When measuring large parts, it can be dangerous when an inspector has to physically engage the part on the machine tool. Making large diameter measurements safe and effortless means addressing all these limitations head on. Foremost, the instrument needs to be accurate without question. It needs to be easy to use regardless of the operator or machine tool involved. And it needs to be versatile enough to measure a vast range of sizes to stay economical. Enter the Gauge Maker Mic 360, a complete in process, large diameter measuring system. The Mic 360 measures any diameter from as little as a few inches to virtually any size you can machine. The versatility includes the ability to mount on a vertical or horizontal lathe, OD ID grinder, or any other machine tool fixture that rotates apart. By in process, we mean it all happens wirelessly inside the machine. While the part is turning, and add a push of a button. There's no need to stop the spindle to take a measurement because all of the recordings are recorded electronically. These benefits translate to a more repeatable, safe, and cost-effective measurement. So how does the Mic360 in-process method contrast with traditional methods? Well, everyone understands the concept of two traditional measuring techniques, direct measurement and comparative measurement. A direct measurement gauge, such as a common scale, a micrometer, or pie tape, provides the actual measurement values straight from the instrument. Comparative measurements, like those taken with bar gauges, indicator style gauges, and other instruments that require a dedicated setting master, obtain their values by zeroing first on the setting master and then taking a reading on the part to see how far you've deviated from the master value. In contrast, the Mic360 is an in-process method utilizing a gauge head that stays inside the machine. The shank on the gauge head fits into a standard carousel, tool changer, or turret. By in-process, we mean the spindle turns the part while measuring inside the machine. No need to stop the spindle. A measuring wheel of known size rotates against the part while it's turning. There is no setting master. The measurement is not dependent in any way on the accuracy of the machine tool or lathe. There is no operator skill involved. The process is conducted at a safe distance without the operator having to physically engage the part. Let's take a closer look. John, can you explain in more detail? There are primary components on the Mic360, a target and light switch combination track part rotation, a gauge head and measuring wheel inspect the part as it rotates, a carbide reflective target is mounted on the spindle or the chuck, something rotating at the same rate of revolutions as the part. As the target passes by the stationary mounted light switch, an infrared beam from the light switch triggers, sending a signal to the gauge head to begin counting. The rotating wheel is spring-loaded against the part. For each rotation of the wheel, a precision optical encoder inside the gauge emits electronic pulses. Those pulses are counted by the computer inside the gauge head. When the part makes one revolution as tracked by the target passing the light switch, the gauge head receives signals of when to start and stop counting. The light switch signal is transmitted to the gauge with a high-speed radio frequency for maximum accuracy and repeatability. The computer then takes into account all information received, the known measuring wheel diameter, the corresponding number of pulses per each wheel revolution, and the total number of pulses counted during one revolution of the part. The computer processes that information, calculates the part diameter, and sends it via Bluetooth to the tablet or CPU display. Ultimately, the computer calculates the diameter by counting how many times the measuring wheel rotates during one part revolution. As we mentioned earlier, if you need to measure a diameter on a round part, that typically always equates to using an OD mic. While this is the go-to for OD measurements, once sizes approach or exceed 20 inches, Limitations come into play. Foremost, deflection of the C-frame takes away from the accuracy. And as the part diameter gets even larger, the measurement itself becomes cumbersome and often takes more than one operator to hold the instrument. The amount of contact pressure and gauge alignment on the part will vary between operators. This makes reproducibility at an exacting level become less and less achievable. However, with the Mic360 in-process gauge, the alignment and the contact pressure are fixed. While the thimble or dial on an OD mic may only have limited travel of a half inch to an inch, 
the Mic 360 is essentially limited only by the ability to turn the part. Feature-rich parts with multiple diameters along the link make inspection costly. Having to purchase numerous size-specific mics and standards adds up to thousands and thousands of dollars. When it comes to the Mic 360, there is no upper size restriction. It becomes obvious that the ability to measure an indefinite range of sizes with no upper limit quickly becomes the preferred option. Stopping the spindle to take a measurement is time consuming, which again adds to the cost of inspection. Not a factor with the Mic 360. In fact, the spindle must be turning while measuring. This is a part of the unique gauging solution. Using the display to get set up couldn't be any easier. Simply pair with the Bluetooth and get ready to take measurements. Temperature is always a concern when measuring large parts, regardless of the style gauge being used. As the part gets larger and larger, and as the temperature gets higher or lower, the part will change in size. The second concern is when there is a temperature difference between the gauge and the part. For example, an OD mic that has been isothermal at 68 degrees in the lab is brought out into the shop to measure a warm part at ambient temperature. This delta in temperature between the part and the gauge produces a measurable difference. On the Mic360, there is an option for applying a temperature compensation feature to negate this effect. Here are some common questions. Does the wheel slip during measurement? What are the largest and smallest diameters that can be measured? Does the wheel experience wear over time? There is no slippage of the wheel against the part during the measurement cycle. The gauge wheel tracks against the part with a prescribed spring-loaded pressure. This pressure is sufficient to keep the wheel tracking with no slippage, even if coolant or oil are on the measured part. Repeatability values in the 1 to 2 ten thousandths range from one measurement to another verify that no slippage occurred during the measurement cycle. The Mic360 gauge has the capability of measuring the largest diameters that can be manufactured today. The gauge wheel does not wear or change size even after years of use. There are two reasons for this. The first reason is the gauge wheel is manufactured from a high strength tool steel, heat treated to 62 Rockwell C, and freeze stabilized. The second reason is during the gauging operation the wheel is rolling around the part in the same manner as a ball bearing with no friction between the wheel and the measured part. Bottom line, deflection, temperature sensitivity, operator skill, and the need for a wide assortment of sizes and standards reduce accuracy and multiply the cost. Again, not a factor with the Mic360. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Stay tuned for a live Q&A with John Wolf. Thank you so much for that great presentation. And now let's get to the Q&A. We have some questions that have come in from the attendees, so we're gonna move into answering those now. If we don't get to your question, don't worry, we will have an answer for you following the webinar. And if you haven't submitted your question yet, you can still do so now by entering it in the Q&A box and clicking Submit. And we'll try to answer it before the close of the session. Okay, now for our first question from the audience. What is the largest diameter that can be measured, and what is the smallest diameter that can be measured? John? Well, Matt, for an external uh, measurement, uh, the smallest diameter that can be measured is approximately one inch in diameter. The upper limit is pretty much wide open. We've had customers measure diameters as large as 40 feet, so there's essentially no limit to the upper diameter of an internal or external uh, that can be measured. There, there are no limitations on the gauge size-wise. For an internal measurement, the smallest the diameter that can be measured is about six inches due to the uh, size of the gauge. Very good. Thank you. And thank you for the person that sent that question. That was a very good question. Okay, great. Uh, we are in the Q&A session. Please send us your questions. Okay, next question from the audience. Does the wheel slip during measurement and does coolant or oil affect the wheel tracking or anti-slip uh, capability? John? Well, Matt, the, uh, the wheel is pre-loaded against the part, uh, spring-loaded against the part with about eight pounds of tension. 
this provides enough uh, pressure that the wheel can track very true and accurately. Uh, we do not see any slipping during the measurement cycle uh, in that situation. We Also, you can have coolant or oil sprayed on the part while it's measuring, and that does not uh, induce any slipping either because the spring tension of the wheel breaks through the film on the surface that's being measured. And the, um, the check for that to verify that there, there is no slippage is the repeatability of, measure, repeatability of the measurements from one measurement to the next uh, proves that there is no slipping, that we're getting uh, accurate and repeatable measurements. Excellent. Thank you for that. OK, on to the next question from the audience. How long does the wheel last, and does the wheel experience wear over time? John? Well, the wheel is uh, manufactured from, uh, Matt, from a, an, o, uh, an uh, A2 tool steel. He treated a 58 to 62 Rockwell C, and then it's free stabilized and burnished a very high finish. So the wheel is very durable. In addition to that, the actual measurement operation is a rolling operation. So the wheel is rolling about the part, very similar to a ball or a roller bearing. So just as you would not see any wear in a bearing over a long period of travel, the same thing happens with the Mike 360 wheel. We just don't see any uh, change in the size of the wheel uh, from the measurement operation because there's no friction. The wheel is free, the, is free rolling against the part with no friction. So uh, we don't see any change in the size of the part over the measurements of uh, life of the wheel. Mm -hmm. Very smooth. Thank you for that. Excellent. OK, and to the audience, uh, we are in the Q&A session. We have our expert from GageMaker online and ready to provide your answers. Uh, you can send your question in by uh, entering your question in the Q&A box and clicking Submit. Uh, we've also received a few thank yous um, for the presentation today, so we'd just like to say thank you uh, for the thank you. We love that you're here uh, supporting us, and we're happy that you're part of the community. Okay, back to the questions. Okay, next question from the audience. Does the gauge offer temperature compensation? John? Yes, there is a temperature compensation feature in the application for the Mike 360 measurement cycle. You can measure uh, the temperature of the gauge wheel and enter that into the application, and also enter the temperature of the part you're measuring into the application. And the computer will adjust the size so that the diameter will be uh, the correct value if they were the wheel and the part were both at 68 degrees. It also will compensate for different materials, say if you're measuring aluminum, and the coefficient, the thermal coefficient of expansion on aluminum is much higher than it is on steel. But once you select the aluminum material and enter the temperature value for the aluminum, the computer will automatically compensate and adjust the measure diameter to uh, the correct value at a 68 degree environment. Very good stuff. Thank you for that. OK, and to the audience, uh, please send us your questions. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. OK, next question. And this is a good one. OK, what is the limitation of grooves, both width and depth? And can it measure internal grooves? Uh, the limitation on grooves, the minimum width of groove that we can measure is, is about 1 eighth of an inch, 125 thousandths. Um, that the the depth of the groove is uh, based on the diameter of the wheel to the body of the gauge head, and the body of the gauge head is about two and a half inches in diameter. The maximum wheel size diameter that we recommend is about six inches, so um, that gives you a little over an inch of depth that you can measure inside of a groove. Uh, there's no problem with measuring a groove internally as long as you meet the width and, and depth requirements that, uh, that we have there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you for that. 
Okay, and we're going to try to answer everyone's questions, but like I said, if we don't get to your question during the session today, we will re we'll reach out after the webinar is over and provide an answer. Uh, if you still have questions uh, for GageMaker or for John, you can still submit them now by entering them in the Q&A box and clicking Submit. Okay, next question from the audience. How many surface feet or RPMs does the part need to turn during measurement? Well, the uh, the recommended uh, surface footage on the maximum surface footage of the measurement cycle is about 360 surface feet per minute. Of course, that's related to the diameter of the part and circumference of the part and the RPM settings on the machine. Uh, there is no lower the, the gauge will operate a little bit higher than that, but that's our our maximum recommended surface footage. Uh, the gauge will measure at a much slower RPM. Uh, or surface footage uh, down to as long as the uh, operation is consistent in speed, uh, the uh, lower limit is, is probably around 10 or 20 surface feet per minute. But typically 360 surface feet per minute is the uh, operating value. Excellent, thank you. And we had a few uh, comments come in asking whether or not this will be available as a replay. Uh, yes, it will. This entire webinar, including the Q&A session that we're currently in, will be available starting approximately one hour after the live session ends, and it will be available as a replay on the Global Spec site for the next 90 days. So please come back, watch again, share it with your colleagues. Thank you. Okay, back to the questions. Next question from the audience. Does the gauge leave a witness mark or measurable indication after measuring? Well, Matt, that's entirely dependent on the material and the surface finish of the material. If you have a fairly rough surface finish of the material, uh, high ridge lines and the where the feed marks from the cutting tool, you might see some uh, burnishing or noticeable witness mark of the part uh, after the gauge wheel has completed its measurement cycle. However, that is a very, very fine amount that is uh, literally immeasurable. It's it's too small an amount to measure. So occasionally on a on a, a rough surface finish or a softer material, you might see a faint witness line, but it's typically not uh, deep enough to be even measured, much less affect the integrity of the part. Mm -hmm. And of course, depend on the material. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, we have some great questions coming in. Thank you to the audience. Please keep sending us your questions. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, next one. Are extra wheels or wheels of different sizes available? Uh, yes, Matt. The, uh, the gauge wheel is very easily removed. The, uh, the wheel is uh, positioned on the shaft of the gauge head on a 15-degree included taper shaft very similar to the way you would mount a grinding wheel. Uh, so uh, just a, a, a threaded nut on the end of the wheel to hold it in position. So it's very quick to change, uh, interchange wheels from one diameter to the next uh, to go with a bigger or larger wheel. Uh, once you change wheel sizes, it's very easy to enter the new wheel size into the application so the gauge so that the application knows what diameter wheel you're using for the next measurement cycle. So that's a, a very common thing. The typical wheel is three and three quarter inches diameter and about a quarter inch thick, but you can go to larger diameter wheels and you can go to thinner wheels, as we mentioned, for the groove. So it's very easy to interchange different wheel sizes for depending on your measurement application. Excellent, thank you. Um, and Again, to the audience, thank you so much. Please keep sending your questions. These are amazing. And here's a great one uh, coming in now. Uh, here it is. Is there any part preparation needed prior to taking the measurement? Well, uh, if you want the surface finish of the part to be free of any chips, we don't want any chips or debris on the surface uh, that might interrupt the tracking of the wheel. But as far as like if there's coolant left over from the machining operation or cutting oil of any kind uh, left over from the cutting operation, there's no need to, say, wipe the surface of the part clean. 
you can go ahead and measure right through that. So we don't want any physical obstructions in terms of chips or things like that to interfere with the tracking. But uh, typically you would uh, uh, just ensure that there, there's nothing on the periphery as far as chips or stringers. And then you just go ahead and measure regardless of coolant or any kind of cutting oil operate, uh, available there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, okay, a lot of good ones coming in. Here's another one. Okay. Uh, referring to the measuring units, um, is it in American standard only? Well, the gauge operates in both uh, metric or English mode, so it gets very easy to uh, change between uh, metric and inch operation. Excellent. Okay, next question. Uh, how is the MIC360 gauge powered, given that is it, it is a wireless device and you said it was stored in the machine? So how is it powered? Well, the gauge head has two uh, lithium-ion batteries in it. They have a battery life of approximately uh, one to two weeks. Uh, what we provide with the gauge is we provide an extra set of batteries and a charging station, and we recommend that you leave that charging station and the extra batteries being charged uh, at the work area, very close by. And then uh, just every Monday morning, if you change out to a fresh set of batteries, then uh, you'll, you'll always be powered uh, for any of your measurement operations that you might do. Uh, it's very easy to swap the batteries out. There's a little screw-on cap on the end of the gauge uh, that has an O-ring seal to keep it watertight or waterproof. and uh, just unscrew that and drop the new batteries in, fresh set of batteries. Uh, we'd recommend doing that every Monday morning. Mm -hmm. That's good practice. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, next question. Um, okay, can the gauge transmit data to a remote device, something other than a tablet that comes with the instrument? Uh, wireless transmission to a remote location or device? That's a question. And I can repeat any of that if needed. Well, the uh, the gauge application, it is a Windows application. It runs on a tablet. Uh, the tablet does have wireless and Bluetooth capabilities. And so it's very easy to uh, connect that tablet to your, uh, to your network or your, your internal um, communication devices. So uh, anything that you can transmit from a standard Windows tablet wirelessly over a network through Windows applications, uh, Excel, Word, uh, mm. any, any typical device like that. Uh, it's very easy to do that. Mm. It's simply a matter of uh, connecting it to your, your network, whether it's out in the shop floor or in your office, and uh, communicate just like any standard Windows device. Mm. There's probably a lot of options there depending on your, your environment and your network. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And that was a great question. Thank you for the person that sent that in. Okay. Uh, next question. Okay. Do I need to send the wheel in to be calibrated? Well, we recommend the wheel be calibrated once a year. And uh, we typically, we, we prefer to calibrate that here in our, or here at GageMaker at our facility, in our lab. Uh, but we do recommend that it be calibrated once a year. Uh, just like any standard gauge device, like gauge blocks or anything like that. Now, if you, uh, just like any other measuring device, if uh, if you develop some history and don't see any changes, you can can increase that interval based on your own internal uh, quality control guidelines. Excellent, thank you. And uh, to the audience, uh, thank you very much for hanging with us. We are still in the Q&A session. We have our expert from GageMaker online ready to provide your answer. So please send us your questions. You can still do so now by entering them in the Q&A box and clicking Submit. OK, we have a few more to go through. Hopefully, we, re we receive some more. Uh, and here's the next one. Are there any parts that need uh, to be replaced over time? Uh, the target or reflector that you showed in the animation, for example. Uh, typically, uh, we do not see, we, we've had some very, very good success and very good history 
longevity of the gauge in operation both uh, at our customers' facilities and in uh, our own internal operations using the gauge over years and years. And typically we don't see any um, any parts that wear out or get get uh, or that fail. Uh, obviously, uh, just like any cutting tool, it is possible to to have an accident with the with the gauge and damage physically damage something. But in normal operations, uh, we've we've run this gauge through hundreds of thousands of cycles without any uh, issues with components needing requiring replacement. There there aren't any real items that wear out or wear down or they, they get used up in the uh, standard operation of the gauge. That's great. Thank you for that. Okay, and we have some more coming in. Thank you very much, audience. Okay, next question. Uh, what machine configurations can the MIC360 be used on? I saw horizontal lathes and BTLs in the presentation. Any specifics required? Well, the uh, the gauge head uh, does need to be held in position for the measurement cycle, typically in a tool holder, just like you would a cutting tool. So, uh, vertical and horizontal uh, turning machines, uh, the gauge will work just fine. Is it does require the gauge to be large enough if you want to leave the gauge head in the storage uh, area of the machine, such as the turret or the tool changer. The machine does need to be large enough to accommodate uh, the gauge. Uh, but typically, you're going to be using this, this gauge to be measuring larger diameters anyway, and that's not normally an issue. Uh, we have installed the gauge on grinders. Uh, we've installed it on specialty machines that just turn the part and uh, with a, uh, a, a fixture that holds the gauge in position. So anything that will let the part rotate and can position the gauge against the part in the area that needs to be measured, uh, we can uh, adapt to that and uh, measure your part. Excellent. Thank you. OK, and next question. Uh, what happens if the measurement cycle gets interrupted? Like, for example, maybe a chip or shaving blocking the wheel path or the spindle stopping? Well, that's a good question, Matt. Uh, the, the gauge operates, uh, we make multiple revolutions of the part when, in the measurement cycle, a typical measurement cycle. And that is a, uh, an adjustable uh, value, anywhere from four to ten revolutions. So. Uh, the gauge will make, say, four revolutions, and each revolution of the measurement diameter is being recorded. And at the end of the cycle, after all four revolutions are complete, the gauge will average those four numbers and give you the average value, and that evens out the measurement cycle and makes it more accurate and repeatable. Uh, but there is a uh, a uh, requirement in the measurement cycle that each successive measurement cycle or measurement uh, rotation equal the previous one within a prescribed amount, uh, which can be anywhere from a few ten thousandths to the thousandths of an inch. So if you were in the middle of a measurement cycle, the first two diameters measured were accurate and, and correct. And the, third, and the third measurement rotation Say the battery failed, or the uh, there was a chip or something that obstructed. That measurement diameter would not equal the other two within the required amount, and the gauge would kick that diameter out and uh, display uh, uh, an error signal that the cycle wasn't accurate or, or correct. So it's a self-correcting feature that uh, eliminates uh, problems with the measurement cycle from obstructions, as you mentioned, or battery failures or thing like, things like that. So it's a, it's mm -hmm. a self-correcting, uh, self-checking process. Those are the best processes. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. And to the audience, thank you so much. Every time I look at the queue, we have three great questions waiting for us. So please keep sending them in. This is great. OK, next question. Um, does the gauge come with a standard shank to fit in my turret, uh, or are there other custom options available? Well, Matt, that's something that comes up a lot. The uh, the standard gauge 
comes with a one and a quarter inch square shank. However, we are very flexible and adaptable in our uh, tool holding operations to match your machine. And we've done everything from a Cat 50V to the excuse <clears throat> me to the Capto shanks to uh, the various quick change uh, specialty shanks by the different uh, cutting tool manufacturers. We can pretty much adapt the holding portion of the gauge head to match whatever your machine requirements are as far as your standard cutting tools that you're currently using. So we're very flexible and adaptable in that area. Mm, that's great. Thank you. Okay, and it looks like we have two more for now, so let's get through. Uh, do I need to purchase different material wheels depending on what I'm measuring? You had mentioned the standard, excuse me, you had mentioned the standard is two, I'm sorry, I written well. You had mentioned the standard is tool steel that is hardened. All right, so the question is, do I need to purchase different material wheels depending on what I'm measuring? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. You, you do not need to measure, I'm sorry, you do not need to purchase different material wheels. We only provide the wheel in the tool steel option because of the durability and the hardness and the uh, uh, the durability of the wheel. Now, when you measure different materials besides steel, a softer material such as aluminum or cast iron, there is a material compensation factor that we factor into the measurement because of the softer material. The tool steel wheel uh, tracks one-to-one -one with uh, any of the steel uh, types, but say if you go to an aluminum uh, part that you're measuring, the aluminum part is softer, and the tracking is not exactly one-to-one. -one. So uh, in that case, you still use the tool steel wheel, but you enter a material compensation factor. You just simply select aluminum in the measurement cycle, and the computer will automatically uh, compensate for that. And that's a very uh, repeatable and scalable value depend, uh, that's not dependent on the diameter part that you're measuring. Mm, that's great. Thank you. Okay, and we have some more. Uh, here's the next one from the audience. If my CNC lathe is heavily used and has some slack, will that affect my measurement accuracy? I'm sorry, could you repeat that question again? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if my CNC lathe is heavily used and has some slack, will that affect my measurement accuracy? Well, Matt, I'm not sure if I understand the, quite the terminology flack and how that applies to the situation. But if they're talking about mm -hmm. uh, interference with the wheel, then yes, that that could be an issue. But uh, the uh, uh, CNC machines are are the most common uh, application that we have for the gauge right now. So uh, not, no limitations from using it with a CNC machine. Great, thank you, and. To the audience uh, member that sent that in, if you want to send in any follow-up, please feel free. Um, but thank you anyway for that. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have some more coming in from the audience. This is great. Here's our next question. Uh, what is the radius on the measuring wheel? Does it need to change to measure different sized parts? The uh, standard radius on the measuring wheel is a 3 16 radius. Um, it does. It does not need to change. Uh, we we have made some shallower radii uh, wheels uh, just to uh, to smooth out the, uh, the broaden the surface area that's being measured. Uh, say on soft parts like aluminum or something like that. But there's no no requirement to change the uh, radius of the measuring. Great. Thank you. Okay, and to the audience, looks like we have one more question in the queue for now, but if you do have any more, please let us know. Okay, and here is the question. The spring load on the measuring wheel, how much force is it? Does that pressure affect measuring accuracy, especially if I'm using different material uh, material metals? Well, the uh, the measuring force 
is uh, approximately eight pounds of pressure of the gauge wheel against the part. There is a threshold point as you as you feed the gauge into the against the part to start uh, preloading or loading the measuring pressure. There's a threshold point where at about four pounds, where below four pounds, yes, the wheel may not track accurately. It may skip or slip and would affect the measurement accuracy. But after you pass that threshold of four pounds, um, there, once the it reaches its tracking ability uh, against the part, and uh, we we go ahead and feed it on into the eight pound value, and uh, there's there's no need to alter that value based on material type, uh, hardness of the material, type of the material, or anything like that. It's a it's a consistent value that gives us good tracking pressure. And I might mention that um, the uh, gauge has a the application has a indicator, a visual indicator that tells you when you have reached that measuring value, that measuring pressure. And uh, so when you, as you're feeding the part in and the parts uh, uh, being uh, preloaded with the spring pressure, the application is going to tell you not ready because you haven't reached the required value yet. Then when you get to the correct spring pressure, the application will uh, give you the uh, ready signal uh, indicating that you fed the part in with the right tension. And uh, the gauge actually won't let you measure until you've reached that ready point. So it won't allow you to measure in a, a condition that's not loaded enough for accurate measurement. So it's a, that's another self-checking feature of the gauge. Excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, we do have some more questions that have come in from the attendees. Uh, so we are going to get to those in a moment. However, I just wanted to address a few questions that came in that were a bit similar. Um, some folks are asking, uh, you know, how how can we find out more information about you guys? What's next beyond this webinar? Um, if you do want to reach out, you can always reach out to the sales team at GageMaker at sales at gagemaker.com. The email address, again, is sales at gagemaker.com. And then you're also invited to come and visit the GageMaker website. That's www.gagemaker.com. So please feel free to come uh, and, and and look through the site. And if you have any questions or would like to reach out or you want to reference this webinar in any way, please do so. I'm sure the team would love to hear from you. Okay, we are going as long as we can, and we're going to answer as many questions as we can. So right now we have two more in the queue. But to the audience, if you have any more, please send them in. Okay, and here is our next question from the audience. Does my machine tool have, excuse me, does my machine tool have to have a special amount of accuracy in order to get the best results from a MIC 360 measurement? Well, Matt, that's one of the unique things about the MIC 360 gauge. Is that it's not reliant on the accuracy of the uh, machine to get our, our measurement results. Um, some of the methods that are used to measure diameters with the uh, standard machine tools, such as a measuring probe, uh, require very much the uh, the accuracy of the machine. Our gauge is independent of the accuracy of the machine, and it is also independent of the skill of the operator. As long as the machine can uh, position the gauge head against the part to be measured, uh, regardless of diameter, um, it will give you a, a very accurate result and is not reliant on uh, positioning accuracy of the machine uh, or, uh, or anything like that or the rotation uh, uh, accuracy of the machine. That is all controlled by our gauge. So uh, it's not dependent on the gauge and it's also not dependent on the skill of the operator, which is another fact. Mm. Things you can't control are now controlled. That's great. Okay. and. Looks like we have one last question in the queue for now. So this will be our last question unless anything comes in in the next few moments. Uh, so here it is. Uh, how much time does it take to perform a measurement? John? Well, Matt, that's entirely dependent on the diameter of the part. Uh, say if we're measuring a 10-foot uh, diameter part and we're measuring it at 200 surface feet per minute, uh, you can calculate the revolutions that they might be, say, 
10 revolutions uh, per minute. And uh, so if you were uh, doing four revolutions for a measurement, that would be uh, four revolutions, uh, four tenths of a, a minute required. So uh, it's dependent on the, it's entirely dependent on the diameter of the part. Uh, if you're going to be running at the at the maximum speed of 360 uh, surface feet per minute, uh, you can very easily calculate the diameter, take the diameter of the part, and that surface feet per minute times the number of revolutions that you've selected, whether it's four revolutions or ten revolutions, and calculate the cycle time or the the measurement cycle time. So uh, it's it's actually very very quick. Excellent, thank you. And while you were answering that, we did receive uh, a couple other audience questions. Um, before we get to it, I just want to reiterate, um, if you do have any additional questions that we didn't answer today or something that you may not have asked, you can always reach out to GageMaker, and you can reach out to sales at gagemaker.com. That's sales at gagemaker.com. Thank you. Oh, and we have some more questions coming in. Okay, here we go. So here's our next question. Uh, why is there no setting standard required? Does that affect measurement accuracy to not have a setting master? Well, the, Matt, the gauge wheel is technically the setting master. We know the diameter of the wheel because it's been calibrated, and that effect is our setting master, if you will. That uh, Knowing that wheel diameter, uh, and as we mentioned, as was shown in the, uh, in the uh, uh, display before, the known wheel diameter versus the revolutions, the exact measurement of one revolution uh, allows us to calculate a very accurate diameter. So there's no need to zero or master the gauge. Now, there's nothing wrong with uh, putting a standard, setting standard on the, ga on the machine and checking it just as a, uh, uh, just of a verification check, if you will, to verify the accuracy of the machine. Say, you know, once a month or whatever your internal uh, requirements might be. But there are no uh, setting standards required to measure the gauge as the um, gauge wheel is its own, quote, internal setting standard, if you will. Excellent. Thank you. And we have some more coming in, uh, so we'll try to get to it. We, uh, we still have another 13 minutes, approximately, to go on the webinar, so we're going to try to answer as many questions as we can. All right, here's our next question. Is my measurement more accurate if I add more cycles? Well, it's uh, yes. Uh, it, it's going to be more repeatable, which uh, sort of implies that it's going to be more accurate. So uh, when you you're basically averaging multiple revolutions, but but we're talking about a very fine point here. We're talking measurements diameters or measurement accuracies in the one ten thousandths of an inch. So, uh, yes, if you make more revolutions, it's going to average uh, those revolutions uh, and uh, give you the answer, the average answer at the end. And it's gonna, so that's going to be a little bit more repeatable and therefore just slightly more accurate. Mm -hmm. Understood. Thank you. Okay, and looks like. Now we have one last question in the queue. Oh, I'm sorry, we have some more that just came in. Never mind. All right, we're going to keep it going. All right, here's our next question. Uh, do I need to change anything on the gauge when measuring different size parts? Settings changes or anything like that? No, Matt, that's one of the, uh, one of the best features about the gauge. Uh, in a typical measurement operation, say if you're using a micrometer, you have a one-inch travel range in your measurement cycle. So if you're measuring a part with multiple diameters, you're going to be required to have a different uh, micrometer or bar gauge or whatever you're measuring for each specific diameter. The gauge head, the Mic360 gauge head, doesn't care what the diameter is. So you can have a part with a 10-inch one diameter on one end and a 60-inch diameter on the other end, and all you have to do is uh, program the machine to position the gauge head against the 10-inch diameter measure it, then you can move over to the other diameters up to whatever the maximum diameter you want to measure. And so the gauge, uh, that's one of the best features about the gauge is that uh, as long as you can position it 
to the part you want to measure, it will measure that diameter. So there are no requirements for uh, masters or standards or wheel changes or anything. Um, we had a customer in uh, South Carolina who installed a gauge on a, a few months ago. They had uh, 14 different gauges dedicated to one machine for the parts that they were machining on it. So every time they would machine a diameter, they would have to stop the machine and bring up that specific gauge, zero it on a setting standard, measure the part, and then they'd machine the next diameter and so on. The Mic 360, once you're done machining, you just set it up, you just put it in position, and measure each individual diameter, and, and you're done. So that's a very good question. Wow, and you guys really had a really good approach. Sound like you really understood the challenges, and, and you really built your method, you know, understanding that, and providing the solution, and that's the way to do it. So very good, yeah, very, very good. Okay, and we, again, have some more questions, so this is wonderful. Thank you so much, audience. Okay, uh, next question. Is there a limit to the number of features I can measure on a part? If my part has multiple diameters along its length, no, it's, uh, as, as we mentioned before, Matt, as long as you can uh, position the gauge head to the surface that you want to measure, it is, there's, uh, it's absolutely unlimited the amount of diameters that you can measure. You can have the, uh, the most diameters I've, I've experienced in my demos and, uh, and uh, setups. Is a, we had a part with a customer that was 40 feet long, and it went from 10 inches up to 60 inches in diameter had 14 different diameters on that part, and we just went in and measured each one, just one right after the other. So there are no limitations of uh, different diameters. As long as the gauge head can be positioned to the part you want to measure, uh, you can certainly measure that those different diameters. Mm -hmm. Very good. OK, uh, next question. Can I measure internal and external measurements on the same part? Well, that's another good question, Matt, that we, that we may not have addressed before. Uh, the gauge head is spring-loaded in both directions. So you can very easily, go, say if you're on a vertical machine and you had a part with an OD and an ID on it, you can very easily come up and position the gauge against the outside of the part, spring-load it in, and take your measurements and then uh, retract uh, a little bit, go up and down inside, and now come the opposite direction to pull against the part, against the ID of the part, and make your measurements there. And so even though the wheel is going to be, the gauge is going to be operating uh, in a different direction, uh, an opposite direction from the OD to the ID, the gauge doesn't care. It's, uh, it is bidirectional uh, in the measurement cycle, and we'll measure either internal or external in the same operation. So once again, if you can position the gauge to the part you want to measure, you can measure it regardless of whether it's an internal or an external diameter. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, we have time for a couple more. Uh, so here is our next one. You were talking about typical RPMs while measuring. Does faster or slower turning improve accuracy? No, it really doesn't, Matt. The, uh, the, uh, the, as long as you're within the maximum upper limit of the measuring cycle, the RPM or speed or surface feet per minute of the part as it's traversing past the gauge wheel is not really a factor. Um, from the slowest RPM up to the maximum, and the maximum is actually uh, a fair amount over the 360. That's just our, our standard, our quoted uh, maximum to give us some uh, some room there. But uh, once you get beyond the measuring capability speed-wise, then uh, it would show up as a as a uh, measurements that don't repeat. But that's well beyond the uh, recommended diameter of 360. So uh, measuring uh, speed, as long as you're within the uh, prescribed range of the gauge, uh, is not a factor in the accuracy or repeatability or repeatability of the measurement. Excellent, thank you. And we have time for one or two more. Here's our next question. Uh, 
Speaking about the tablet, uh, how far away can the tablet be from the gauge head? Does it have to be on the machine or can it be somewhere else in the shop? Well, the tablet, <clears throat> excuse me, the tablet communicates uh, with the gauge head via Bluetooth. So it's got a pretty good range. It's probably, oh, and it, dep it depends on the environment and the obstacles that might be in the way, but, you know, maybe 50, 80 feet uh, range on the tablet. So well beyond what you would want to be using to operate. So uh, the tablet is typically mounted on a bracket on the machine close to the machine controls, but the bracket has a very quick uh, release feature on it and a little handheld uh, uh, pocket on the back side for you to hold it. So uh, if you want to pull it off of the uh, mounting stand and walk around the machine and do your measurements as you're walking around, uh, you're not going to wander far enough away from the machine to lose the connect the Bluetooth connectivity between the gauge head and the tablet. So um, very good connectivity mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, and um, we are. Uh, if there's any last questions coming in before we move to close this down, while we're waiting for that, I just want to reiterate. Um, we'd love it if you follow up. Uh, if you want any more additional information about GageMaker or what the teams are up to, you can always visit the website at www.gagemaker.com. Um, if you would like to follow up uh, on a more personal level, have a one-on-one -on -one chat, you can reach out to the sales team at sales at gagemaker.com. Again, that email address is sales at gagemaker.com. We would love to hear from you. And Okay, it looks like that actually was our last question, so we are going to move to wrap this up. Uh, so again, then, uh, John, thank you so much uh, for that great presentation. Thank you to the Gage Maker team as well. And John, thank you for taking the time to answer some questions. Um, oh, you're very welcome, also, uh, Matt. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Yeah, we're very happy that you're part of the community. Absolutely. And uh, we'd like to also thank our audience members, of course, for being part of this webinar event. You will be receiving an email from us with a link to the on-demand version of this presentation, so you will be able to come back and watch this again or share it with your colleagues. And lastly, please take a moment to complete a survey, which will appear on your screen at the end of the slide webinar. For on-demand viewers, you will find the survey located along the bottom of your attendee console in the survey widget. Again, thank you for taking the time to attend this webinar event. Take care, and we'll talk with you soon.